this is recording still? Yeah, of course it is. Oh, are we recording already? <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm doing audio and both, hey, the, and both the cameras are recording. So now we're going to do okay. a clap sync. Clap sync. Okay, so on three. And we'll do two of these <clears throat> just for safety. Okay. okay. <clears throat> one, two. Oh, that's pretty good, but let's do another one just for safety. One, two. First one was better, I think. I think so. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Hot Ones at Home. Uh, this is our second episode. And uh, uh, full kudos to uh, Sean Evans. I almost say Chris Evans this time. But <laughs> kudos to Sean Evans because he's still alive with that bionic stomach. Thank you for this idea. And we're doing it. We've got all new hot sauces. And this time, uh, I'm going to be interviewing Matthew. And uh, we've got a few different rules this time. I don't know why, because I guess we like more pain. We've also got a penalty section this time. And uh, <laughs> the penalty, because last time, you know, the heat didn't really start until number seven with ass in the tub. Uh, as I had mentioned before, now ass in the tub is number two. Uh, but even with the uh, more heat, uh, we, we were leaning a little bit heavily on the Frosties, which were really good, and I highly recommend them if you're going to try this. I mean, if we, the heat's getting to us, we could take a spoonful of Frosty when we, we need it. But if we take a second spoonful of Frosty, then we get a penalty. And the penalty comes in grenade form. Yes, we got uh, these awesome bottles of the General's Hot Sauce, uh, Shock and Awe, the hottest one, Danger Close, the second hottest, and the tamest one, which is number one on our new lineup. Yeah, we actually don't know how tame it is or how spicy it is because uh, <clears throat> the people who make uh, the General hot, General's Hot Sauce, they don't, uh, they don't really give us a Scoville unit rating. They just say, oh, one's One's mild, one's hot, one's very hot. So, uh, if we uh, if we if we cave and do uh, one of us does uh, two spoonfuls of frosty because we just can't take the heat anymore, uh, then we get, then we get a we have to do a, a dunking of uh, uh, danger close uh, the grenade. And if we do it a second time, if we, and, 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 you know, if we commit the, uh, the thing, sin, the sin a second time, then we go to the shock and awe. So the first one is, uh, as I said, it's the uh, General's Hot Sauce, Dead Red. And, uh, and boy, I tell you, you know, the bottles, really. Aren't, aren't those like the coolest? They're six ounce bottles, they're glass, they're shaped like grenades. And they got those dog tags. Um, and they got, yeah, they got dog tags. Oh, and the proceeds for the General's Hot Sauces go to uh, veterans. So, yeah, anyway. really, really cool, really yeah. cool people making these hot sauces. Okay, so first one, uh, Dead Red. Boy, I like that. Yeah. That is tasty. That really is. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a sting to it. Um, at, you know, if it's got a worse thing, that'll be coming later, I guess. But no, I like that quite a bit. What's your name again? Matthew. Oh, okay. Well, actually, it's uh, it's uh, Matthias. <laughs> Matthias. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> oh, mm, mm, sniffling already. Well, that's a good questionable that's a sign. Great sign. <laughs> Is that a great sign? All right. During the summer of 2019, you spent four months four months in Japan as part of a North Central College's study abroad program. That was obviously a big experience. How did it affect and or change you as a person? Well, I think even just committing to it before I went on the trip itself was a big change because I mean, you know me, I'm not I'm not typically the type of person who would jump to do like a big trip like that regularly mm. especially a trip where i'm going to be alone mm. not with anyone in the family it went through my mind that like oh you know what i i am going to be doing like as many japanese lessons as possible in my four years and my teacher told me with, with the trajectory i was on all i would need to do to to qualify for a major was do study abroad and like take another class 
but just the fact that I, I went home and told you and mom, who were both in the living room, like, I'm thinking about studying abroad. And you both were immediately supportive of that and, and were like, oh yeah, you're definitely doing this. Uh, because I think like the minute that I had even half committed to it, you, you guys made sure that I was fully committed to it because, and, and I'm glad because it was, um, I think something that needed to happen since I, I, I didn't, I didn't have any experience living in a dorm. Well, I mean, well, yeah, I, I we all figured it would be a, a really, you know, unique and, uh, Worthwhile experience for you. So, and I, as long, and I, and uh, it seems like uh, you did uh, did uh, wonders for you. We go to number two, ass in the tub, which this used to be number seven. Once again, we're up in the heat, so uh, we're going with uh, ass in the tub for number two. Uh, ass in the tub, which. Um, you know, is uh, they list it as a range somewhere between 50,000 and 250,000 on the Scoville. But since they can't give us a straight answer ever, uh, <laughs> I put it down to number two at 50,000. Now, while in Japan, what was your favorite singular experience? It was when I was in my culture class. Mm. Um, Masada Sensei, who is just the most cultured man I've ever met, uh, he had he had a bow tie. He had suspenders. He had a, he had a real Matt Smith doctor look to him. He invited everybody in the class to his house. Oh man, where was it? It was in. Oh, I feel so terrible that I don't remember this. I, oh no, it was it was I think it was in Seto, maybe. Um, so but, out in the country. So yeah, kind of out more out in the countryside. And so we got to his house, and it was just gorgeous. And then we the walked. Bow tie in the car. Yeah, the bow tie on, on his little car was was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was absolutely astonishing because we walk inside and it's like all this just this log cabin aesthetic, and right off to the right off of the entrance, there's this study that's just, um, it's like everything I ever dreamed. It, it's my the aesthetics that interest me. You know, a lot of it is inspired by. Um, you know, fiction that's set in like Victorian England, or you know, there's Tim Burton stuff, or there's like Studio Ghibli films, mm. and those are the things that I think comprise a lot of the the comforting aesthetics for me. Mm. So this was like all of that at just sensory overload, kind like the, kind of like the ultimate for you. I remember, yeah, <clears throat> I, I remember thinking that like I I almost was going to cry. I was so taken aback by like how beautiful this this house was. He even like he, he played something on the gramophone and then he had like a huge like cello that he started playing. It's like this is the most in, in, interesting man in the world. Like they should have gotten him to be the new Dasekis guy. Oh, um, there's still time. There's still time. Yeah. Um, uh, but the, that night essentially we had a rule where you can't sit next to anybody that you know. Because he'd also in, in, invited some other students and other staff from other schools that he worked mm. at. And so we drank uh, Asahi beer and ate curry and talked with people. At one point, one of his one of his teacher friends like uh, started like singing in Italian. It was it, it, one of the most wild evenings. And I had several conversations in Japanese that I, I felt quite confident in. And it was kind of a mixture of like Japanese and English because, you know, I was with people who were either sure. teaching English or knew some English. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it, that's the beautiful thing when it's, you know, you and someone else who is not a native speaker of your language, but you're both learning each other's languages. Mm -hmm. You can fill in the blanks pretty easily once you get into a good group of things. So that that night, I remember walking, walking out of the house on the way back to the train station and I was just like, yeah, this is definitely the best night of the entire trip. Very good. Very good. As I've started to sweat a bit, let's go to uh, number three, which is the uh, Seafire Gourmet Reaper Hot Sauce. This one uh, uh, is allegedly just a bit, uh, a bit nastier, 72,000 on the Scoville. Ooh, it's it's all dark. It's giving me it is, uh, it's giving me some flashbacks of the bomb. Hopefully, it tastes better. Hopefully, I would have to, right? Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That really. Well, sweet. it definitely tastes better. Mm-hmm. Definitely tastes better than the bomb. 
right now, ass in the tub, I would probably rank heat wise higher than Reaper. Oh. So what I might do, I might um, I might make a notation that you know ass in the ass in the tub might go higher up on the list. Anyway, and a final question for the Japan trip. Uh, just uh, very, uh, very briefly, what was your most bizarre experience while over there? Most bizarre experience? That's that's a tough one because um, you can only pick one. Yeah. <clears throat> At one point, uh, <clears throat> we made this thing called Jungle Juice. They put just a crap ton of like sliced fruit and juice and stuff like that into essentially a plastic bin and then poured a bunch of alcohol into it, and we all wrote our names. Anybody who was participating and chipping in money mm -hmm. wrote their names on this bin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then basically we uh, could just, you know, take cups and just dip it in. Um, I drank a fair a fair bit of it. Didn't feel incredibly um, trashed. <laughs> so I, I, I can't... I, to this day, I don't know if it was just a bad batch, like it wasn't prepared as well as it could have been, or if I'm just strong. <laughs> but that was the night that we, at, 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 I think at two, no, three different times, the third, I wasn't there. At two different times, the security from North Central had to, not North Central, from Nagoya, had to be like, uh, you, you guys need to keep it down. Um, so that was, a, that was a fun night. I, I'd retired for the evening, before the point that they were all in the park, at Ishiratori Park, making a louder ruckus, and then apparently the, po the police were called, but I had already retired for the evening by that point. because you, was... you played it smart. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool, well, we are up to uh, <clears throat> the next one uh, from Seed Ranch. It's Hot Thai Green Hot Sauce. This one, uh, this one is supposedly just a, 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 a notch higher than Seafire at 74,000. So, hmm. and it's a green, a healthy, healthy green. Healthy green. Yeah, it is. It's a light green citrus. Yeah. Not, not overpowering at all. Not overpowering at all. Hmm. Make a note, uh, ass in the tub is possibly going over hot tie. Yeah. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this next question, you're gonna you're gonna want to feel the need to go on for about four hours. You might wanna okay a bridge a bridge in a little bit. Anime. Okay. How did you come upon the world of anime, and what exactly hooked you into it? Okay. Um. Well, I came upon it. <clears throat> Um, just in general, whether I knew about it, its like, its significance or not, when I was a kid, you know, we would watch Studio Ghibli films, and um, you know, some of them scared me, like Spirited Away. I was kind of like spooked by for for a time mm. when I was younger. But I think that um, the style, like even at, at a young age, I knew like, oh, this is this is like it's Disney, but it's different. It's different from what I'm from what I'm used to. It wasn't until 2014, like I'm talking the very beginning of 2014, I watched Attack on Titan. And it was a, a, a scale I had never seen from an animated series before. Would you say that's the one that like hooked you permanently? Yeah, I would definitely say that. I mean, right <clears throat> after that, like I downloaded the Crunchyroll app on my iPad and then I had watched that uh, like, the first three that I remember watching in 2014 that hooked me were uh, Attack on Titan, Sword Art Online, and Kill a Kill. Which, like, looking back at it now, quite an assortment across various genres, moods, tones, mm -hmm. um, target audiences. I think, though, that Attack on Titan was definitely the one that made me, of all of them, uh, it convinced me... Yeah, I need to. I need to to give this a look. And by the end of 2014, like I've watched, God, God knows how many. I, like that. That's always how it starts. You know, people have said that like that your first year becoming like a huge anime fan is always going to have like 
you're going to watch the most in that first year. And then it'll kind of even out, you know, as, as yeah. you know, you, you re remember you have a life and you have to focus on other things. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was definitely the one that hooked me. Next up is, uh, okay, this one's going to be Stargazer. This one uh, jumps up some. It's 118,000. Oh my God, that was so sweet. We have a lot of sweet ones. Yeah. Mental note, ass in the tub is now hotter than Stargazer. Who's going to unseat? Yeah, who's going to unseat the champion? Well, the, the mid-champion. champion. <laughs> if you could only recommend one anime movie, what would it be and why? Oh, movie. Specifically a movie? Yes. Okay. I'm thinking of like, I'm trying to think of the stuff that's like in like my top 10 because I know there are definitely some movies in there. I think the one that I, I can think of right now that I think would have the, the widest appeal to most people, I'd say maybe the the Cowboy Bebop movie because that, you know, so I, I, that's what I guess you were going to say. Yeah. yeah. And the reason I say that is because Cowboy Bebop was a great series and I've, but I've, and it, I've only ever watched the whole thing through like once mm -hmm. um but it was great and i never wrote a review of it mainly because i felt like if i wrote a review of it it's like what can i say that hasn't already been said before but i didn't see a ton of people giving love to the movie and i feel like uh the movie is a culmination of every quality that the series does really really well mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> I think that if you watch the Cowboy Bebop movie without having watched the series, it's a great primer and an entry way to the series because it has all the characters and everything. It might not have as much of like the uh, emotional grit because like Bebop was a show that was known for um, its fun episodes, but it also, at the end of the day, got to like the beating heart at the core of each of the characters and kind of, you know, it kind of tore down the facade of like the power fantasy that each of those characters represented and kind of showed like what made them tick, what made them human. The movie doesn't necessarily have that in large doses, but it does do what the series always did, which was like you can have an episode where they introduce a completely new character and they leave an impression that will be felt throughout the entire rest of the series. And I think that the the, the bad guy, uh, <clears throat> Vincent, from that movie, you know, he has one of the, the greatest fight scenes I've seen in an anime. Because um, I've often said that if I was to ever make a movie, you'll know that, it, that I, uh, you'll know that it was a movie made by me because it'll have a fight scene on a train, it'll have a fight scene on a tower, and it'll have a moment where someone is either kicked, punched, or thrown through glass. <laughs> and that, and Cowboy View Up the movie has all three of those things. All right, next up we've got uh, Eo, Thor's Hammer, Super Hot Sauce. Mm. Okay, yeah, it, it comes in a little bit, a little bit. It's a delayed. Yeah. We haven't had to resort to the Frosties yet. No, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Uh, if you could only recommend one anime series, what would it be and why? So <clears throat> this used to be tough because I had a top three of like my three <clears throat> favorite franchises. Mm -hmm. But then there was a fourth series that I looked at a bit more. And while I was in Japan, the third season had aired. It's called Bungo Stray Dogs. And it's a it's set in modern day Yokohama, Japan, <clears throat> and it's a, kind of a crime story between uh, the armed detective agency, what is it, it's called, versus the port mafia. Oh, I think I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. So every <clears throat> character is named after and based on a poet or an author. And in the first season, that may not be too um, too much of a sell for most people because it's all Japanese authors. Um, in the end of the first season and throughout the second season, they introduce um, the Guild, which is a Western organization that's comprised of characters based on Western authors. Mm. So you have uh, the main villain is uh, uh, Scott F. Fitzgerald, the author of Great Gatsby, 
and he has an amusing power that's very based in like the aesthetic of Gatsby. Um, what I love about it is that it's not a show that has really a, a long-term narrative goal. It's not like it starts and it's like, we have to accomplish this objective. It's like, it's a, sort of a day in the life type of thing. You know, th there are characters themselves have their own individual goals within each season, but it's kind of just a, it's a story of the city. It's kind of like Sin City in a way. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's very theatrical. I would say that um, it's performed and acted in a way that like brings to mind like this you know very strong uh, melodramatic theater, but it also has a lot of like action spectacle because everybody has superpowers, and those superpowers are named after and based on those authors' works. It's just a constantly rewarding show that I could probably enunciate my feelings on better if I wasn't uh, feeling the effects of hot sauce. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Uh, yeah, and because uh, uh, Eo Thor's hammer uh, kept uh, kept hitting me with Mjolnir uh, a few times there. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> next one. We're into the final four. Back to, with our old friend 357, Mad Dog 357. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad that you did it because yeah. I, I was looking for the right time. Yeah. The stereophonic blowing. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, number seven, 357. And of course, as the name states, it's 357,000. We've been here before, although with a different lead up. All right. It used to be number nine, now it's number seven. Mm -hmm. Which makes me nervous about eight, nine, and ten. Oh boy, that's that's far too much. Oh god. I don't know what, we, <laughs> what I'm thinking. Oh well. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Ah, that's interesting. Just like cherries. A little bit. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be hurting. Very soon. Oh yeah. We're in the danger zone now. Yeah. I think I can go one more before I have to get the <clears throat> frosty though. Really? All I think right. I can. All right. If you can, I can get yours. No, no. I'll hold on. Oh, <clears throat> I'm gonna take off the sweatshirt though. Okay. Really quick, while I can talk. Due to the pandemic, the dates of most cinematic releases are uncertain at best. Oh my God, this hurts. <laughs> As of right now, what's the one film you are looking forward to the most? Definitely No Time to Die. It's it's the one that, like, I think Daniel Craig, it's sad because he's kind of bat, like, 50-50. Not much because of his performance, but because of the quality of the films. Like, um, Casino Royale was great. Quantum of Solace, I think, you know, looking back, it's not as terrible as I thought, but it was, it's still not as good. It, it's basically, it, you know what it is, it's because it's the epilogue. It's just the epilogue to Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. But stretched out, yeah, unnecessarily. Yeah, that may have been a, a bad move on their part. Yeah, and it also just like, it was, it was, it comes from an unfortunate era in American action films where they were all trying to be like the Bourne films. But, when they tried copying the Bourne films, they could never do it as successfully. Bourne, like, gets a lot of shit for the, like, the, the jump cuts, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the shaky cam. But I think the way they did it at their best was, you know, they knew where to place those cuts. They knew where to place them. Well, yeah, Bourne knew how to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, in uh, Quantum of Souls, they didn't, the director did not do that as well. Which is a shame because you know, they had the action coordinator from Bourne for some of those fights. So mm -hmm. stuff like, you know, like when he's getting that fight with that guy in the apartment, that's, uh, mm. that stuff is good. But. You're looking forward to that one. I'm looking forward to No Time Die because I think that, um, you know, based on the trends, it, it, you know, it's in line to be another good one after Spectre was kind of more middling. I just think that it looks like, you know, so much practical effects, so many like big stunts, I just, I, I can't get over how good that film looks. Okay. Okay. <sighs> oh. 
We may need to uh, do a milk refill. A uh, milk refill. I'll do, let's do that now. Okay. <clears throat> oh, God. I'm going to go with you because I have to keep drinking. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. What's next? Oh, boy, see you. Next is uh, Mono Loco. Mono Loco. Uh, whereas 357 was 357,000, Mono Loco was 665,000. So, roughly twice. Um, Mono Loco. You sure you want to do the punishment? I can edit it out. We have done never know. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, well, I'm gonna hold on now. <clears throat> Number eight, yeah, mono loco. Yeah. No, I don't taste much there. <laughs> that worries me. <laughs> I don't taste it either. <laughs> I'm trying to do something. I taste something, but I don't know what it's gonna do to me. Oh, I taste oncoming heat. That's all I taste. That's all I taste too. Oh man. Oh god. Ah, uh, and <clears throat> on this one, just to try to be uh, brief and specific, okay. <clears throat> if possible. <clears throat> you and at least two groups of your friends are taking advantage of the lockdown to partake in various role-playing games, including yes. D&D. Of the wacky scenarios you've participated in so far, is there one moment that stands out above the rest? And can you, su <laughs> and can you sum it up in ten words or less? <laughs> Uh, I might need a piece of paper. Can I use the back of this? Well, yeah, I just need a plan. All right. All right. Let, me, let me. I need to think about it in my head for a second. <clears throat> ah. Actually, no. Here, here's the thing. Yeah. Since that was the second part of the question, I'll answer it. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 oh, God. Probably the moment that I told you about the last time. The, mo the moment that we decided. That like I need to start drawing these characters. I need right. to start drawing these moments. Right. Because two of our party members fell down a ravine, and then we didn't know where the hell they went. And so it was just me and Josh, the two characters that couldn't <clears> see <throat> and didn't have dark vision, so we mm -hmm. didn't have night vision, going through a cave like, <laughs> like disarming traps. And then um, my friend, my friend Josh, he. Uh, caused an explosion that uh, ended up bringing down the whole cave. And um, Ben, the DM, told us, you've got three turns to get out before the cave collapses. So we ended up jumping down the ravine too to figure out where they went. And we found out that like, and we'd heard them because they were in the same call, like online as us. We knew what they were doing, but we were so concerned with our own stuff that we weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. So when we get there and we're finally like realizing what they did, it's like they had found a bunch of gold, they did mushrooms, <laughs> they were tripping balls, and they thought that they were fighting a dragon, but they were just punching a rock wall, and they were all <laughs> naked. We <laughs> and so then so we just had to climb out of this cave, um, and it was just absolute nonsense. And we we, we were just we, just the image in our minds of all of us walking out of this cave just it, it sent us into a fit of mm. laughter <laughs> nice. <clears throat> all right last two uh <clears throat> this one is dingo the widow maker yeah this one's at uh 682 000. so number nine <sighs> <clears throat> i should have taken the tons or gas out too late now. <laughs> Too late now, my friend. I mean, it's just an observation. Yeah. Hmm. Complex taste. Yeah. And sweet and savory. Hmm. Pain. <laughs> Back in high school and college, you either hosted or co-hosted radio shows, played a lot of music, and did a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff as well. What did you take away from the radio experience? 
What I took away from the radio experience is <clears> that <throat> I shouldn't be embarrassed uh, of my own voice. I, I should, you know, I think that was one of the experiences that I think pushed me to be a bit more outgoing. The best content that I've ever produced on radio has always been the stuff that I do with other people. Because otherwise, you know, sometimes I can just end up kind of freezing up or I don't, or I just, you know, I, I start a tangent, but I don't know where I'm going with it. So I think having people around, um, it made me realize that I think I, I work best in a team. But then again, I did the show Sakura Sunset, which was like my Japanese music program. And that was super awesome. Uh, but I think that was just because I, I knew so much about the music that I was playing that it was easy for me to find stuff to talk about. Mm. So you learned that you were you work really good in a team, and yet you... Uh, yeah, I'm good in a team, you know, when, when it's stuff that I'm not like a super expert on, I thrive in a team. Actually, in any environment, in any th environment, uh, in a show, I thrive in a team. But if I know anything, if I'm passionate about the thing I'm discussing, um, I can I can talk at length, as we've seen. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> last dab. <sighs> Oh my god, why did I put that much on? What am I, an idiot? Finally, you've produced and edited various projects so far, including these hot ones at home sessions. Is there any particular project you'd like to tackle in the future? Well, I've just recently been inspired, as I was telling you, by a wonderful animated uh, <clears throat> music video that was sort of a, a compilation of, of different animation cuts. And it was just so wonderful that I think I'd love to do more. I, I recently edited an AMV, an anime music video. Mm -hmm. It's my first time doing it. I've watched them for years, but this is my first time trying it myself. And uh, I thought it went uh, very well. So I think the thing I'm most excited to do, <clears throat> I'm most excited to um, do more video reviews. Mm. I've been blogging for <clears throat> years. And uh, I was looking at the stats, and I was looking at what were consistently the highest rated or highest viewed posts on my blog. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to turn those, since obviously they get a lot of attention, into video reviews. And so um, in addition to this, which I'll be editing, I think after the, I release this, I'm going to be working a lot on a review of uh, Kizu Monogatari, which is a film trilogy that I reviewed quite some time ago. Ooh. Well, very good. <clears throat> well, I think we've uh, we, we've accomplished. I think you know, the second time through. Yeah. I think we were able to steal ourselves a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. We were able to resist the the frost. We were able to resist. <clears throat> so uh, uh, that camera, that camera, audio, anything you want to promote. Uh, I have. Uh, my blog, sakurasunrise.blog, S-A-K-U-R-A, sunrise.blog. Uh, I've been running it since 2017. Uh, new posts every week or every two weeks. I'm also the associate editor at animequarterly.com. Uh, I also post there. I try to post there twice a month, maybe more. I'm also on YouTube, which you're watching now. <laughs> so uh, check my, you know, subscribe, uh, like, subscribe, share for more. Um, I'm going to be making video reviews, I'm going to be making music videos, I'm going to be making more of this. Enjoy. <laughs> Alright, and that should do it. Well, we've got uh, at least a couple new hot sauces that uh, uh, you know, we like and we're going to keep. So uh, <clears throat> until next time, uh, we have a, a new special guest. Uh, that I'll be interviewing. Uh, till next time, we need a catchphrase. Uh, keep it saucy? <laughs> keep it saucy, San Diego. See, see you in the hot seat. See you in the hot seat. Goodbye! <laughs>